Dr. Baugh is founder and director of Creative Evidences Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. And in that area down there, the, he has um, gathered up priceless things from all, that just all have to do with the fact that God's Word is true. And if you start with the Word yes. and conform yourself and discipline yourself to God's Word. See, God's Word said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, if you start there as the truth, then... Uh, you, instead of starting over here and say, well, now here's what we think, here's what, well, now this must have happened here and that must have happened there. And we theorize that this happened here and this happened here. Now let's see if we can get the Bible to uh, agree with that. Well, no, I don't agree with that. Well, forget that because this is what we think happened. Well, Most you can't, people do it yeah, that way. But you can't do it that way. No, and, no. And, and honestly, uh, get anywhere in truth. And what has always been amazed, what has always amazed me has been the fact that people say, we're searching for the truth. And then you come up and say, well, what is it? Well, that's a theory. Well, I thought you were searching for the truth. Well, yeah, we are, but then this is our theory. <laughs> when all the time we have in our hands something that has proven itself far more times than it needed to prove itself to be absolutely true. And Dr. Baugh and a number of scientists around the world um, began their study a number of years ago by saying, look, God's Word is the truth. Now we're going to start here and begin our studies here, and we're going to go to Him and ask Him to reveal to us the science of what He did. And He is available. And Oh, yeah. Yes. And I think there, too, is another thing that scientists that don't know the, the Lord have um, really, you, you, you don't find out much unless, uh, unless you go to God and make Him Lord. Leading scientists have admitted that now that they know the Lord, they're a better scientist, their mind oh, operates yeah. with a, a clear purpose and a clear thought process. God is alive and God is available and His Word is the manual. Yeah, absolutely. All right, today, uh, Dr. Ball, I, want, I just really have a desire for, for our audience to know what this pre-flood heaven and earth, but particularly the earth, since the All earth right. is, is, this is our home, this is what yes. God created and gave yes. to us. Um, what it was like when God created it, and then when that flood came, uh, what happened to almost destroy it. It, oh, yes. it, it was just... And we're still affected until this very hour yeah. by the flood. The effects of the flood. Let's. Um, and you want me to do all of that on one telecast? <laughs> no. I want you just to. I want you just to start. Okay. Oh, all, right. <laughs> we'll, all right. And we'll go from there. But but I really I I really have such a desire in my heart for for our television audience to realize how this thing was created and what it was like before um, before man allowed sin and death by sin yes, to, to get involved to the point to where it, it, it right. finally we almost blew destroyed it. it. Yeah. Yes, we, we wrecked it. And God was, uh, in later telecast, we might work on the fact, why would God permit such a flood to come? Well, God caused the flood for a particular reason. It was judgment, but it was also love involved. This particular model was done with our specific research in mind. Uh, I've worked on this over 35 years. Over 50 major scholars have been involved in this model that we're going to talk about the next few days on the telecast. And Robert Summers spent six weeks of his time, he's a world-famous artist and sculptor, 
Bob Summers spent six weeks of his time preparing this model just for us in the creation model. Right. Now, yeah. in order to get the pre-flood world in mind, I think we need to step back just a little bit and look at the first day of creation. And then we'll appreciate okay. and understand what's happening there. Good. Uh, so we need to go over here and... In your studio, we have brought some of our special placard displays done by our graphics committee. And a very fine artist did this for us, Steve Miller. It shows the representation of the Creator. And you and I have already talked in the last two telecasts about the fact that God the Son embodies the entire Trinity. In mm -hmm. Him the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth bodily. So we have uh, a representation of Christ not to be worshipped, but to be appreciated. We're not to worship a representation. We can worship Him. Oh, He's yes. available. Yeah. He's alive. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This chart was done... And in the 14th verse it said, and the Word became flesh oh, yes. among us. Yes. So the same Word that slung this universe into its existence... You're right. ...became the very flesh that Jesus... And we've handled Him. We've body. known Him. Oh, that's... Just and He lives within us yeah. at this very Praise moment. God. Possessing Christ I all possess, wisdom and strength and righteousness and sanctity complete. And bold in his name, I dare draw nigh before the ruler of the sky and all his justice meet. Praise Thank God, God for Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Brother Copeland, leading scholars have recently admitted that no matter what model you follow, whether it's the evolutionary model with a Big Bang scenario, and by the way, it wasn't a Big Bang at all, it was a big word. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, God amen. said, let there be light, and yeah, there was light. It wasn't a noise. Oh, that's right. It wasn't a noise. It was not an automatic uh, explosion without a personal God. It wasn't an explosion at all. It was an orchestrated, deliberate activity of a personal God. Right, yeah. And leading evolutionary scholars have admitted that even in their scenario, in their way of viewing things, all of these galaxies and worlds and living systems that we have originally came as a result of light. So they're thus mm. admitting that when God took the energy of the light that he created on day number one, and on day number four, design the star bodies and the galaxies and all of the physical dimensions outside of the earth as a sphere of water on day number one, that that materialization of that energy from the light is consistent with scientific principles. But now, Christians and creationists think they have to accommodate the theory of evolution and the study of cosmologists and cosmogonists, those are individuals who deal with what the universe involves and how it came about. Uh, many creationists and Christians believe we have to accommodate the theories of naturalistic thinking in our model. Not so. The manual was there to begin with, mm -hmm. the Word of God. And if we go back to the Word, as you've been emphasizing on these telecasts and broadcasts, if we just go back to the Word of God, we find consistent truth that can be verified. So on day number one, God created the heaven, the space-time dimension, and the earth as a sphere of water, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And that light flooded the entire universe. Now, with that background, let's step to the model up here. The scripture states, in the beginning, God created the heaven, the space-time dimension, and the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. That shows that that sphere of water that God created and called earth had futuristic 
intent. That meant that before the week was out and God said it's finished, God would do a lot more with that earth. Hmm. God has a way of taking that which he designs and doing more with it than we could ever envision. In our own lives, God has done a lot more with us oh, yeah. than we ever envisioned yeah. he would do or was capable of doing. God can do anything. Watch this. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's a principle in science, uh, there's an experiment that can be run following principles called electrolysis. When you take mm -hmm. water and add energy to that water, a magnetic field automatically is generated and that water is separated into its basic components depending on how much of the field is energized. Basic components of hydrogen and oxygen. So on day number one, as the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, automatically that generated a magnetic field. Brother Copeland, that field is so vitally important to our lives. Duprov in Russia and Becker in the United States found that all living systems depend on the energy of that magnetic field for cellular communication. Mm -hmm. The birth of our own offspring would not be possible. Our own lives would not be possible without the energy of that field. So what God did as the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters, that sphere of water on day number one, what God did then was absolutely necessary for what God's doing in our ability to move our hands, to speak, to live at all, all of the work is absolutely necessary. That same magnetic field that, that our compass points to. Yes, it's that you that use same, in flying. Yeah, it's that same energy that flows through every cell, every molecule yes. ever created. Huh? That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. Now, in passing, I think your audience will appreciate this. February 1995, Scientific American, in an article, admitted, now that's one of the world's most prestigious scientific journals. They admitted that we are losing the Earth's magnetic field at an alarming rate. And in 1,500 to 2,000 years from now, it'll all be gone. Now that's quite a statement. Mm -hmm. In other words, if whoever wound this thing up doesn't come back and wind it up again, life is not going on. Well, I know who wound it up. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And I know he promised he's coming back well, again. Well, now, Jesus said if the time wasn't shortened, that there'd be all kinds of cataclysmic things And occur. that no flesh would be saved. Yeah, you couldn't. That's consistent. It could not continue under its present That system. is consistent with scientific research. You see, we're looking for truth. We have found truth. It's the Word of God. Now we're finding academic evidence verifying that truth. So we come back to the manual for our hope. And that manual points us to our designer, oh, our absolutely. creator, and our redeemer, Jesus Christ. Now, that's day number one. In the beginning, God created the heaven, space-time dimension, and the earth as a sphere of water. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And that's important. That means in order for light as a source to have a respect to darkness, that globe, that sphere of water, had to be rotating. Mm, had to move. Had to move. So it was in motion, rotating. Now, verse number 6 of Genesis chapter 1 is extremely important. And God said, let there be a firmament. You wanted me to discuss that pre-flood world. This sphere, this shell, represents that firmament. Okay, this this clear. That's right. Uh, this bubble. plastic bubble that this uh, globe, this world is, this Earth is in. That's right. Represents this this firmament, firmament that created was on day number thing. two. When I first heard you talk about that. One of the most exciting things I have ever heard in my life, the way that God, what it represented to me was how special 
God's man was in his mind That's to right. create such a fabulous place oh. to live. And this thing here is what made it so fabulous. And this is what it got torn up so badly. You're right. At when the time flood of the flood. Came, yeah. And we're affected till this very hour because this collapsed at the time of the flood. Uh, I'll admit to you, one of the most vital, active, and exciting areas of academic research in this creation model has to do with that oh, firmament. Yeah. For instance, let's tell your audience all about this firmament. The Hebrew word there is rakia. Now, we won't go too far into that except to say that uh, the word rakia has to be fulfilled specifically. That means that this firmamental canopy, probably just a few inches thick, suspended approximately 10 miles above the earth. This canopy of water with a hydrogen crystallized in the middle would do some wonderful things. The hydrogen crystallizing within this water in very thin layers, and that meets the specific Hebrew word rakia, translated firmament appropriately, that would do a number of things. First of all, that would filter out ultraviolet radiation. Now, you and I at this very moment are being damaged by mm -hmm. ultraviolet radiation. Mm -hmm. Before Noah's flood, no ultraviolet radiation got in. It was all filtered out. Well, now, if God created a perfect universe that gave off ultraviolet and other shortwave radiation, how does that fit? It fits beautifully. Well, watch closely. And this, to me, is very exciting. This firmamental canopy filtered out ultraviolet radiation but it had filtered in, it filtered that shortwave radiation, such as ultraviolet, into the very field of the canopy and thus restored the Earth's magnetic field within the Earth. To keep from losing it. To keep from losing it. In other words, a daily, moment by moment, recharging of that field. Now, there's a reason for that. You and I are using up that field. Mm -hmm. As we think, as we talk, as we move, our cellular communication is made possible by the energy of that field. We're using it up. All biological systems, even in sleep, use it up. Therefore, it needs to be constantly recharged. My cells and my body have to communicate with one another. Oh, yes, otherwise nothing works. Because they have to replenish, works. they have to do certain things. Some cells are, are eyes and some cells are fingers. So, and then the brain has to communicate. All of that is based on the fundamental energy that's brought about by the magnetic field around yes, the earth. Yes, that the Spirit of God generated on day number one and the canopy kept <clears throat> resupplied on day number two. That tells me why Adam could live, even after sin came in, he could live 930 years. Oh, yes, even as a sinful being. And you and I can't. I mean, our body can't. It, it can't function that it's long. It's deteriorating Because too fast. it's got too much uh, damage occurring to it, and we're losing the, the basic motor that drives yes. the physical body to start with, which is that magnetic field. To emphasize that yeah. cellular communication, do you realize that the brain of man assimilates every second of time 100 million signals from the rest of the body all through the energy of that magnetic field? 100 million signals mm. every minute of our lives. Now, in the next telecast, I think your audience would like to know, in this pre-flood world, how could man live so long? How intelligent was man in this pre-flood world? How smart well, was we he know, really? Well, we know we're only using from 10 to, at the maximum, about 15% of our mental capacity. And not nearly that much. It's much lower still. He's a pretty smart guy, wasn't he? <laughs> he was smart to design <laughs> God, all of He's in that. the image of God. Oh, oh he's in the image of God. Original man was an awesome creature. Glory be to God forevermore. My, my, my. Well, to wrap it up today, oh, these telecasts are going so fast. <laughs> yeah. That structure above the earth filtered out ultraviolet. That structure above the earth assimilated that shortwave ultraviolet and other energy back into the field, regenerating the energy of the field so living systems could function. But it did a lot more. It made, uh, made it possible for man to live longer, to think better, made it possible for dinosaurs to live. We're going to talk about some exciting Praise God. Let me tell you what. 
this same spirit. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he took one drop of water. Just one drop now. And, and weighed yes. all of the, of the oceans. He calculated that with one drop of water. Yes. He took one piece of dust, the scripture said, and, and weighed all of the earth's matter and balanced it. Now that's the same spirit that's planning your and my life if we'll just turn our lives over to him. Amen. This same word that he used to create all matter is the same word that says, by his stripes ye were healed. It's the same word that promises you and me that if, if we will just stand on that word and believe it, that he watches over it to cause it to come to pass. This is a magnificent thing.